Hello and welcome to Talking Fit People. My name is Host Derek and I want to address Host Lorenz Walker's comment. It says, Host Derek Wynn regarding ADHD and depression is a psychiatrist needed for a proper diagnosis. Or can a self diagnosis be successful? My friend was saying, Persona Bay plays too much of a role in properly determining people don't have an objective in your call. I, by and large, agree with your friend, but the thing is, here's the problem. Those things are different. ADHD and, di- and depression are different things. Depression is a much more iffy issue because it doesn't matter really whether you need the training and the officialness to diagnose depression. What I do think is that there are some individuals who benefit a great deal from attention in that in that regard. Somebody paying attention to their mental health actively. Now, those individuals who are depressed are likely not in a position or a place in their life to to provide resistance. So I would suggest that in fact they may be in that place in their life when they need to give up resistance and try somebody else's way. But I don't know exactly. Uh, I don't really feel qualified to talk about depression because I don't feel like I've ever been a depressed person. I don't know what it's like, and I just don't really feel qualified to talk about it. Okay. But well, I do that's kind of. About the ADHD. And do you think that could be accurately assessed by one person or by their self? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's the that's the that, that's actually the weird thing, because uh, how it works is uh, like you can just go into. Um, like you can go to a family health practice and you can just tell them you're depressed and they'll give you any kind of antidepressant you want. They don't care. But if you go in and tell them that you you have ADD or ADHD, they'll, they'll want you to at, at least uh, have a counselor uh, check up on Oh, them. I tried doing that one time, dude. And that's I mostly tried doing because that one time. They, they don't want to probably give out psychostimulants without um, it being diagnosed. That's yeah, like I... This whole problem. I went in, I went in, I can relate to that because I went through this whole situation where I had to answer this like 150 question test, I had to talk to a therapist, and then I had to talk to like three counselors, and it's like I never, I never got anything for like ADD because I assume I don't have it, but at the time it, it felt like it because I couldn't focus in school. Mm-hmm. Really bad, like it was super bad. Okay, so the thing is, whatever the doctor tells you about what he can and can't do, he's lying. They can do whatever they want to do. My doctor told me. Well, well, I wasn't a doctor, it was a physician's assistant. Does it make any difference? They can't write that prescription for sure. You have to talk to an actual doctor for sure. Mm hmm. Yeah, physicians' assistants can't write any prescriptions for Schedule 1 drug or Schedule 2 or whatever Schedule 1 is. But the thing is, if, if you go, to, if you see a doctor, it could be a family practitioner. Like, my doctor is not a psychiatrist. He's not a anything. He's like, a, he's just the random doctor I got assigned when I was with that insurance for a little while. Mm-hmm. Dr. Chen. And so, I went and made an appointment to see him. And I said, okay, so, look, I'm here, basically, I need to get ADHD medication. And he said, well, I can't prescribe that for you, and I don't do that kind of prescription. You're going to need to see a specialist first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've, I've heard this story before. Okay, so the, the, reason- thing, the thing is, this is the key. You cannot allow yourself to be dissuaded easily. And you have yeah. to you have to you have to go in there with the right positioning of you and the other. Yeah. So you've got to convince them not only that you have a problem you're trying to address, but that their failure to address it is going to be a problem for them. 
Because mm-hmm. they want to just dismiss it, get it out of their off their plate. Yeah. And they can do that. That means that we need to go back to the problem issue. Like say, look, I'm not even advocating. I'm at this point, ma'am. I'm not concerning myself with which ADHD medication. I am telling you, I am experiencing a serious problem. I need this. I need to solve this problem. Yeah, I have researched it considerably. I've come to understand that the medical community, there is widespread consensus this is a medical problem. I am looking for a medical solution. You are offering me, instead of help for my medical problem, you are offering me pushback about it. Now, doctor, it's time for us to sit down and restart this conversation with a proper perspective on this. Doctors are tough because, of course, they're entirely used to being God, right? Everybody mm-hmm. hears whatever they say and just accepts it. Or they fight it for stupid reasons. And the doctor's always right, you know? Either the, the, the person they're dealing with is wrong and, and disagreeing with the doctor, or yeah. correct and just going along with the doctor. Because there aren't really a whole lot of circumstances in which this sort of thing happens where in fact the doctor ought not even have control over this thing and I ought not have to jump through this hoop. Yeah, the reason I had brought this up was because uh, my friend just came over and I was just talking to him and he was really, he was he just kept bringing up a, uh, the placebo effect and he was like when somebody are, are uh, he's pretty much saying that an individual person uh, if they think that they're suffering these mental illnesses or whatever depression and attention deficit disorder are, um, that that affects their judgment and that the person just doesn't have an, uh, enough objectivity to be able to uh, assess themselves and come up with this correct diagnosis, oh. which I've found to be not. Here's the thing. ADHD is not actually a disease of any sort. Yeah, like, that, so that's, that's what I've heard. That reasoning, you know. Well, yeah, that's what I, that's what I had said, because I've heard that it, it's just... Uh, an adaptation and just humans that had its own j- benefit, and it yeah. comes with comes with pros and cons, and the, our society just deems the cons as negative. Yeah, it's just one one um, incarnation, or you know, of a normal human. Yeah, but there's a, a better word for it. But I can't think of it. Right now. Yeah, it's that. I think that's what it is for sure. But that doesn't mean we don't benefit from taking speed. We do. We we happen to be, a, you know, manifest in a certain pattern of ways that that happens to line up such that when we take speed, we benefit a great deal. So the, the problem here is we shouldn't have to get a prescription for it because it, we don't need it because we have yeah. a disease or disorder, but because it makes us more effective. That's it. Nothing else to say about it. Yeah. But since uh, in my case it's a little different since I'm having uh, depressive symptoms mixed with some uh, of the symptoms from uh, predominantly uh, inattentive ADD. Um, Don't mention those. Hmm. Because look, but I, the, the depression. I wonder if they Don't you think the depression comes from a, from underachievement? No, that's yeah. That that's the thing. It it, it really can. That could be also it because. Uh, People that have like ADHD, they have a much higher chance of having comorbid depression and anxiety. I think both come from underachievement. We are, we're, we, get, we are anxious when we are not fulfilling our destiny. It, it, we don't know exactly what our destiny is, but magical thinking tells me that Lorenz Walker has a destiny, and his soul knows that he's failing to fulfill his destiny, and his soul is saying, Amphetamine. <laughs> feed me amphetamines, please. You know, and the thing is, once you get um, if you get, if you get accustomed to working all the time on on amphetamines, I've discovered that when you're not on them, you keep doing the same things anyway. So you, eventually, you kind of don't need them anymore. But do they? Uh, I, I've heard that when you're on these medications, they 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 could dull the the positive effects of ADHD. What are the positive effects? You mean? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, Hyper focus, being able to take in a lot of information with ease or quickly. No, it maximizes that for sure. 
you you will never experience hyper focus and taking in information and with ease and getting shit done with ease like you do on a shitload of Adderall. I mean, that's what it's for. Uh, I, I, I went and I had seen the, oh, well, it was just a physician's assistant. Um, there's that, there's that Dr. Daniel Amen, seven types of ADD and all that, and his, uh, spec scans, and <laughs> there's a, there's an ADD type. How, huh? much, how much speed has he done? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> has he done as much as me? <laughs> I don't know. I bet he's not really an expert on it, then. <laughs> yeah, but I think that also uh, speed will affect people differently based on their brain chemistry. I don't dispute that. I'm saying our brain chemistry is the exception to, ev to brain chemistry in general. Every other type of brain chemistry responds to speed badly and can't handle it. And in fact, it goes crazy. Maybe they keep doing it. But NTPs are fine. Yeah, I was... Uh, when I talked to the counselor initially, like... A by the time I was out of there, I had a like fully convinced. Um, that, that you were that you were ADHD. Yeah, the, well, inattentive ADD. He has. I think he said his his daughter or his wife or somebody had it as well. We were just talking about it. Don't call it inattentive ADD. What the hell is that? Uh, call, call it ADHD. You want to make sure that the, the disease okay. you're going well, for. Well, technically, it's considered ADHD. ADHD predominantly inattentive. Okay, but because I don't have I don't have the I don't have the hyperactive or impulsive symptoms of the ADHD. I'm not saying you do. I'm saying that letter helps you get Adderall. Mhm. Mm but I don't necessarily want Adderall. I just want relief from the negative symptoms. And Adderall might be the answer, but there also might be other medication that could necessarily or maybe help. Yeah, I'm not saying the other ones aren't good. They work a little bit, but uh, your best choice is Addy. That's the, it's like everything else is it's a half-assed version of Addy. It, it, it works like a charm. It'll clear up your, it's, what it does is it dulls your emotions. You won't be fucked. Even more? <laughs> Even more than there you are? <laughs> this is the thing where it's, right now you are Shock full of emotions, but you have no real way of processing them because to process them requires either that you understand them more clearly, which you don't because they're not a valued function, or that you do a bunch of shit to sort of clear them out incidentally. And the solution you've come up with is basically this, which helps some, and now you're going to the doctor and that helps another, but the one final holy grail solution it starts with an A and ends with a methetamine <laughs> that is very true uh, how, how soon uh, after you take it do you feel the effects then like 15 20 to 20 minutes really? yeah but that's the won't... thing. I feel like it, it's so stupid that you can't just get something like that. Cause like, what if you just try it once and then you're able to quickly tell if it is a benefit to you rather than having to go through all the that's because that's, and all that bullshit. That's because Addy is gonna that Addy would probably benefit everyone, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like no matter like I doubt there's gonna be someone out there that uh, unless they give them a very 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 minor dosage of it. Like so they're only trying to know. figure out who it helps them out. Who's doing it? Exactly. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If you can take, get somebody like my ex-wife and give her Addy, well, she's already busy as a beaver bee all the time anyway, right? Like she's. Hey, like, Brooks is here. Hey, Brooks. It's like she's already oh, always cleaning up and shit. And, and so, for her, she's at the right balance. She'll clean for a couple hours. She'll watch some TV. She's got SI down pat. She's got SI in the first slot. She's Addy's only going to take her out of equilibrium. It's only going to harm. And she's not going to feel more productive because she's already got the productivity thing down. She knows how to do that shit. She doesn't need Adderall to get anything accomplished. So over the long haul, it won't work for her at all. In the short haul, it might give her... Uh, she might work for 16 hours instead of 12 or something like that, you know, but... Do you think... Yeah, so do you think it, uh, whether it would be effective or not is somewhat determined by type? 
I think it's completely determined on type if you're asking whether it's effective over the long haul, whether it's sustainable, if it's a sustainable drug use. If you are not an NTP, in my opinion, and you're taking Addy, that's great. You have a, you're taking a party drug. For an NTP, I, it is a, a regular identity sustaining thing that I can take regularly and be fine taking it regularly and, in fact, be better off taking it regularly. Yeah, because this is like what I was, I was talking with the counselor about, and I was kind of wondering uh, whether or not uh, NTP or INTPs had any correlation to uh, ADD or ADHD and that stuff. And he was just saying that um, the person he knows is like definitely not that kind of type. Person who knows? I mean, it could the be person that the count. Yeah, the person that the counselor knew said like he's just definitely not. He doesn't fit that at all. ESTP or um, INFP may also be, uh, or ENFP, or ESFP, SE DOMS. It's your NE DOMS and your NE tools and your SE DOMS and your SE tool functions. Those are the ones that uh, potentially can can display it. It's because your extroverted perceiving is too high up in the stack. Well, have you actually, wait, have you looked into any of the Dario and Nardi stuff at all? Oh my god. Because if well, the only reason I bring high NTPs listen. I'm sorry, no, the only reason I want to bring this up that's all I ever need yeah. for anything. Yeah. yeah, the reason that I want to bring that up though is because it has to do with the brain patterns and all that stuff. And when it comes to that, that kind of I don't know, it just seems like there could be a connection there. I think there there probably is, but I mean Yeah, I'm sure there is. I, I just, I just don't understand why that's the thing that convinces people. Well, it's not that it convinces me. I just find it interesting. Okay, fair enough. I like you digging into it. I want, I want to be a brain scientist. A brain scientist. Correct. Hmm. Okay, then, it is so. You are now a brain scientist. Congratulations. You can receive your degree as you leave. Uh, if you go out the back door, uh, stop at yeah. Judy, okay?